I'm Dr. Bart Rademick, and this is Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, and Real Success. And this is part two of a series of Heart of Resilience, celebrating our humanity as we're creating a safe space so that our voices can be heard and we can be witnessed with our own humanity. In this, in this series, you get to experience two amazing artists, Benjamin Swatis and Azarine, traveling through Africa and really bringing to the communities in a creative inspiration to see the world in a beautiful way and how we can all tap into the potential that's within us to become those heroes as givers or receivers or leaders or students. Because it's important for all of us to learn how we can collaborate together, but also to discover the things that we didn't know was actually available for us. And this is that story in Kisangani, where people just were not familiar with the fact that there was a clinic that had so many um, health uh, solutions available. And you're going to hear some of the stories from Benjamin Azarine as they describe their mural in Kisangani. Benjamin and Azarine, thank you so much for joining me today. You truly are inspiring to all of us. Because what you're doing is you're bringing the symbolism of what it is it to be human or the best version of humanity in our relationships with nature and to step into our own power as we actually can help each other to attain that. So I'm excited to be talking to you today about Kisangani. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah, well... It's really, really incredible story that we keep looking back upon is like, wow. I mean, just before getting on the plane, we received a notification that it could be really dangerous in Kisangani. And we had to kind of ask ourselves, is this our calling? Do we need to be there? And of course, the answer was yes, of course. We got on the plane and when we arrived, we just met beautiful people everywhere and did not feel an ounce of insecurity or uh, danger. We just were welcomed and immediately moved straight into this first of three murals in Kisangani at a clinic uh, that offers, as you said, just such incredible services to the community and many for which people did not know that there were doctors on site that were capable of helping correct like bones that had been severely healed in the wrong directions, for example. So we jumped on this first mural and we thought, you know, we, we really want to emphasize the beautiful work that's going on within the walls in a really powerful composition on the outside of the walls? How can we symbolically inspire hope in people that had felt that they lost their ability to move, their ability to hear, their ability to walk, or their ability to have a baby in a sanitary safe environment and say hello to this beautiful, healthy newborn, you know? So, Azarine, do you want to share a little bit about it? Yeah, of course. Um, it was really interesting to get inspiration for her, a mural about uh, hospital, because where do you start with that? You want to definitely make sure the message is, is uh, straight to the point, but also that you have an image that draws people in at the same time. So it was really interesting doing the design for this, because it was quite you know, it was quite a, a challenge. And uh, talking to the doctors, getting a walk through of the whole facility and getting to actually see the, the patients that are benefiting from uh, the work that they're doing, it was really inspiring. So we started off with uh, an amputated child that um, was in, like inspired and looking forward to the future of what the clinic could really bring him. And uh, yeah, like, he's looking in the direction of a healthy leg, a prosthetic 
look, here's an example of somebody that's talking. Here's an example of somebody that has turned over a new leaf and picked up a flower and seen the beauty in their life and so many chapters to come. And that is the inspiration for emerging out of the wounded inner child, metaphorically for all of us, and moving into the next chapters of empowerment. Mm -hmm. And then as we move to the right of the composition, uh, there is a girl that had a really severe ear infection that lost her hearing completely and that they were able to create that container for her to lift her ear up and hear again for the first time in years. And the eye is so wide, like, wow, my senses are alive. And what is it that I'm hearing? What is that? You know, and that what a, what a moment. And to paint that pinnacle moment, that, uh, that moment in the plot where it's the climax of transformation, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the mural really follows that theme with the, the next scene of, of the knee and the way it healed and being able to see the x-rays because x-rays are really not something a lot of people put in murals. So it was actually super fun to paint this because it's like, we've never painted that before. Who would have thought we're going to paint an x-ray? <laughs> Um, so you see originally where it healed, and then when you go over to the next, you see this woman with great posture, her knees are finely healed, and she's walking into, from the nature, and just feeling great about herself. She's like, you know, I can finally walk, and, and um, those are actually waterfalls that are in uh, the Congo River that are just... I think they're an hour from Kisangani. They're really incredible. We didn't get a chance to see them, but they're just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, natural phenomenon. Yeah, really. Like the like humans, like incredible natural phenomenons, and the waterfalls too. And so that's a symbol: the waterfalls of the cleansing, the cleansing of the external, but also the internal suffering. Uh, to liberate the heart cave and allow us to soar, to really embody our true potential. And as we walk around the corner, then there is an image of a woman that is pregnant. The background is black and white. That really accentuates the shadow. It uh, has like a, a sense of, of graphic design uh, we wanted to really pop, but also the message of the color coming from her unconditional love. And that benefits her, the baby to come, and everybody around her, and everybody that walks by the mural and sees and feels that, that love and that security, that safe environment to not have to look over your shoulder and say, how am I going to protect us? No, I can really celebrate and feel the growth happening within my own belly. You know, this is totally wonderful. And, and what I find even more remarkable is, you know, how you were sharing with me that people didn't even know that there was a clinic there. And so, you know, in our Western society, we're, we're so reliant on our own health and we've got all the facilities around us to get there and, and feel very disempowered when we don't have that. And, and here you are, in fact, signaling the community and any passerby obviously who comes through that town to realize, look, I can get help when I need it. And ultimately our humanity relies on our ability to ask for help and get help when it's, when it's needed, but also to be given or received in the most appropriate way. And, and what I love about what you're doing is you're not telling anybody anything that would be misaligned, you know, with their, their, their culture and their values. You're essentially inspiring them to become more and inspiring them that, yes, there is more for them. I mean, it's absolutely brilliant how you, you portrayed that in this mural. And it's wonderful that we get to hear what your message is versus trying to interpret it later on. 
Mm. Wow, well, this mural has a really long journey. I mean, this is created in the center of the slave trade over a hundred years ago, and now a place of empowerment, of development, of art, uh, you know, of incredible medical providers of, of locals that don't want to run away to another country to make more money. Like one, one of the surgeons is making $500 a month. And he's like, this is where I need to be because I, I want to be here for my people, my, my city. And we'll find as we talk more that this same actual surgeon that traveled with us as the, the murals and the journey down the Congo river continue actually had a student from his medical school, his university, where he's a professor in every single town and city that we stopped. Man. And so it really is giving back from the inside out. And to add the, the journey of this mural just continues to blow us away. And the story continues right now, where when we shared this initially on social media, a friend of mine in Hawaii, a doctor reached out and said, oh my gosh, one year ago, I was sent a photograph of a child with rickets that has bowed bones all over his body. And I didn't know what to do, but you are there now and you're with an orthopedic surgeon. How can we find this kid? How do, how do we make something wow. happen? How do we transform a life? And we said, yes. And Dr. Robin and her partner immediately wired funding for the doctor of the Congo, Dr. Didier, to travel with us down the river. And it took over a month of traveling down the river and down dirt roads and through the second largest uh, rainforest in the world. And then a canoe across a lake to a little village on an island in the middle of the lake to find this little boy. And oh my goodness, he traveled back with the doctor after art classes and murals and he helped paint one of the murals that you're gonna see that he traveled back and he's currently in the University Hospital of Kisangani awaiting the operations yeah. to transform his life and learn how to walk again. And it happened from just some paints, some brushes and a wall and some really big, awesome hearts. And, yeah, some, and two very inspired artists. Well, you know what? I have to make a statement here because this is absolutely incredible. You know, how two artists, you know, going to a different country, you know, inspiring with their creativity, creating that space that's safe to have their voices heard. And, and most importantly, the impact that it has over time. So it, it's, it's wonderful to, to recognize and for all of us, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, we can't cancel the past. We can't rewrite the past. We have to recognize, you know, what didn't work in the past and let the past be in the past and in the present, stay present with where we are today, with what's possible and build and inspire rather than run away and leave behind and ignore what's really there. And so clearly, yes, I, I know that that so many people are disadvantaged in so many different ways, but we can't cancel that truth and we can't deny that truth and we can't run away from it. We have to, in the ashes, if you will, of, of the things that, that aren't working from the past is rebuild our future. And that's exactly what I feel that you are doing with the arts that you're sharing with others is recognizing their humanity but also acknowledging their power to step up and to become what they need to become rather than the, the alternative. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Beautiful reflection and well said. Hey, Azarine, I know you have something to share about this journey. No, actually the, the uh, surgery is happening this week. I just got a message last night. That's super exciting. Yeah. Wow, right here, right now. Yeah. And just that alone, we know what's possible. You know, we don't have to be victims of the past. You know, we can be creative and inspire others. And just, just you know, how wonderful that this surgeon in Hawaii 
or this person in Hawaii is offering to help this little child. Yeah, and it's 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 really incredible because it's such a like just from a painting that this inspires people and then it rolls out to a whole community and it actually brings everybody together. So everybody wins in this. It's really incredible. Yeah. Yeah, paraphrased and kind of uh the what what rings true for me over the years and for us is that it's true it's true you may never see the results of your actions in this lifetime but if you do nothing there will be no results and that's a uh, mahatma gandhi paraphrased but it definitely you know we have no idea but sometimes then you do actually get the the beautiful gift of hearing how you, your actions have affected other people and you're here in real time right now and with all your 20 plus murals uh, in africa alone and I, I can i don't know the number worldwide but what you guys are doing is just absolutely incredible and so i just want to wrap it up uh give you guys the last word yeah you never know what your actions can do and even just with a simple thing that inspires you you can bring so many people together and uh really inspire the world wonderful thank you for that talking to benjamin Azarine, heart of resilience the story behind the art throughout Africa, inspiring others so that they can be witnessed, their voices heard, and so that we can create a better place for all of us in the way that's best for all of us as well. I'm Dr. Bart Matamika. This is Prescription for Your Transformation. Real people, real conversations, and real success. And we'll be back with part three next week with Benjamin Nazarene. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Dr. Rademacher's Prescription for Your Transformation. Continue the path towards discovering your own authentic genius by tuning in next time for more real conversations with real people.